So welcome back everybody. Our special guest is with us. I think he said some people will be happy, some will be disappointed. Magnus Carlsen, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. I'm a bit surprised you're still in cold Norway. Are you planning to spend the whole winter in like cold countries? You were in London, now in Norway, then St. Petersburg. What's happening now? Now I'm gonna have a little little break before St. Petersburg just to recharge those batteries. And then, um, yeah, but apart from that, I'm just gonna spend uh, the days where there is no sun, no joy. <laughs> yeah. Sounds surprising indeed. I thought you'd be in a beach in Oman somewhere by today. So let's talk London Chess Classic. Were you rooting against Fabi yesterday? Were you worried he would overtake you in the rating list? As a matter of fact, um, after after um, the the match, I was very satisfied with everything. So I kind of thought I was not going to be petty and. Um, and um, just, uh, yeah, I mean, wish him well in general for um, the London uh, Chess Classic. Uh, as soon as the game started, though, uh, that all disappeared. So I was rooting <laughs> pretty heavily for Hikari yesterday. It was an interesting game, but it looked like Nakamura was always sort of able to defend, right? Or did you see some point where Karan could have won? No, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I thought... I, I didn't really understand what Hikaru was doing in the opening because it uh, seems like such a pleasant position for uh, for White and he has all these sorts of uh, um, possibilities with, uh, I mean, at some point knight h4, uh, threatening some knight f5 and also d5 followed by f4 looked very, very interesting to me and uh, uh, what he chose as well was very promising. I don't know. I mean, I didn't check with the computer, uh, but it looked like Hikaru had some resources at least. Right. You didn't choose a great day when it comes to London action today. Did you see the game from today, Nakamura Karana? No, I'm going through it uh, right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, so, uh, clearly Hikaru was uh, was aiming for this Knight of Six stuff, yeah? Um, Looked like it. Trying to yeah. cash in from the leak. Yeah. But... Huh. I don't know. Yeah, it seemed like... It seemed like the end game should be a little bit better, yeah? Uh, it felt like, but there's not a lot of pieces, maybe. It's just nothing. Yeah, there, there, there isn't a lot of... Scope for for play. Uh, I don't know. Maybe when when Icaro, now when Fabiano went knight g4, maybe to unbalance the game, he could go s3 and take with a pawn on e5. Yeah, I'm not That's, qualified to have an opinion. It looks fairly drawn to me, still. Yeah, it looks six. I mean. Yeah, king is seven. I thought if you can get h5, then maybe you have some. Ah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like doesn't look like much to be honest. Uh, there is another game though. Yeah, there is Levon versus Maxim. I'm not sure they have the game oh. there. This move nine d4, I had never seen before. And the same with Maxime, apparently, who's thought like half an hour after it. Oh! Well, that is... major stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, you're not like supposed it. to... Yeah, I'm not supposed to just... go d4. Uh, Black's supposed to prevent that, but... Uh... No, it looks like I, a relevant idea. Knight takes d4, bishop f4, computer is happy for white, I was told. So probably have to go cd and yeah. Label ah, so c7 is the, is the key. Right. Uh, so Maxime, yes, Would appear that my net... 
Yeah, he spent a lot of time and then he went for... They went for knight c6, going for the slightly worse ending. I don't know, I haven't checked yet, bishop c4 check looks like a move as well, but clearly some relevant theoretical developments there. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, it's a good thing that not everybody plays 5e3, yeah? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think now they stopped exchanging the queens and go queen c7, so maybe he's not so scared of it anymore. But yeah, I mentioned yeah. that you had a good position with his e3 step. So, do you have the position now? Is there decent winning chances for white, or it's defendable? Oh, you just want bishop b6? I don't know. Uh, if there's one person who's good at this stuff, it's Maxim. I mean, he loves defending shitty positions. I'm not uh, sure if he loves it, but he has this very narrow opening repertoire, so he gets them a lot running into surprises, no? Yeah, he does. Well, I mean, now he has a choice, yeah? To go to exchange the bishops at some point, or to go knight d4, which pretty much forces bishop d4. And, uh, I mean, intuitively, I, w I feel that he should go knight d4. Um, the only question is whether takes and rook c1 is uh, unpleasant for a concrete reason. Right, uh, say a castle after rook c1? Mm, well, I mean, that's a minor achievement for white already. Uh, okay. After castle you go, I don't know, maybe rook c2, then rook c1. And uh, hoping that the c file is going to be more useful than the d file. That looks pretty unpleasant to me. Fair enough. So instead of knight d4 check, he could also take on e3 or... Play some random move in. Yeah, but but then the knight is going to come to d3 and it's going to be it's going to be pretty unpleasant. So long day at the office for Maxim. Yeah, uh, very much so. I I think I I, I don't know unless he has some. Some very nice solution coming up pretty soon. Then, yeah, I don't really see how we can how we can es escape prolonged torture. I don't really know why Levon went rook h d one last move though. It seemed that maybe rook a to c one was was more natural. Uh, I mean, it's the old wisdom, yeah, that when you have uh, when the D and C files are open, you should go for for the C file because that's going to be further away from from the enemy king. I felt that rule. Maybe he wants to stop king e7 after rook h d one, king e7 has bishop g5 or something. Or... Yeah, but then I don't know, king f7, rook d7, king g6, maybe then bishop e3 back. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. Who knows? Generally, who did you think was the favorite with this format they're playing? Where they, I think tomorrow they're playing two rapid games and then four blitz games. And classical, you get like six points for rapid, you get four points for blitz, you get two points. Well, I mean, normally I'd think that uh, Fabiano is uh, is the strongest player of them, so I'd consider him. Slight favorite, if any. Uh, but yeah, now he has. He didn't manage to get anywhere in the classical games, and I was going to be playing on Hikaru's you know, home turf. On the other hand, he has won. He has won a match against Hikaru in, in rapid before, so it's not. I heard Hikaru was very sick during that match, though. Oh. You're more into gossip than I am. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's true at all. <laughs> Generally, you think Fabiano is a good rapid and blitz player, or this narrative has been a bit overtold that he's weak at these time controls, or is there something to it? No, he's clearly weaker relatively to the others than he is at classical. Um, he has a very, very demanding style, 
which doesn't translate that well. Uh, but I, I do feel um, that when the stakes are high enough that he can raise his level a bit. Obviously, he didn't prove that now in London. Um, but I, I feel like the gap is not as huge as, as people think. And I think in some of these branches or hybrid events, he just um, doesn't care. Generally uh, speaking, sorry, go ahead. Sorry? Go ahead. Yeah, but I, I, would, I wouldn't consider him too big of a favorite now. Uh, I think I would say now it's it's uh, pretty even. Uh, to be honest, I'm not quite sure what the format is now. I just know it's some rapid and some blitz. Yeah, it's two rapid games where you get four points. You get like six points for a win in the classical, and then four blitz games where you get two points. So in classical you can score. I can't do math. Twelve, and in the rapid blitz you can score. Sixteen. Yeah, um, Fabiano also won this match against Grishuk last year in in uh, in St. Louis, where he was just way down at the start, and at some point it seemed that he just figured it out. Uh, obviously, uh, Grishuk got tired, but it seemed at some point he couldn't win games anymore, uh, and Fabiano was just dominating. So I I don't know. Uh, but, I mean, certainly Hikaru has the match where he, he wants it, but I, I don't think it's so clear. So, speaking of the match, in general, are you just just happy to ke have kept the title, or were you annoyed about the discussions of the format and his classical chess dead and so on? Does that stuff reach you, or you don't care so much? No, I mean, I, I think about it, and I think that um, the format is is not ideal for sure. Um, again, it depends on it, it depends on on what you want. If you want uh, to uh, to uh, you know, um, I don't know what what is the goal of the world championship? Is it to um, is it to showcase the best in the world and and uh, and the general thought is that the one who wins the world championship is the best player in the world um i mean i think that's supposed to be the idea but for that the format is is far from from ideal in my my opinion uh but i think my opinion of what constitutes the best player in the world is also a bit different from 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 others um like I think you have to be able to play all kinds of uh, of, of formats to to do well. I, mean, I think uh, rapid chess, especially, and all, and to some extent also blitz is uh, just as much of a valid form of chess as as classical. And uh, uh, to some extent, I think it's a it's a better form. So if it was. Up to you, what format would you currently prefer? More classical games or a combination like they do here where Rapid and Blitz is also part of it? Um, no, my current favorite, which, is has, which it has been for a while, is uh, to keep the same format as now, uh, except that each day you play four Rapid games instead of, uh, or relatively short Rapid games, let's say 15 plus 10 as you, as you play in the... Uh, world Rapid, and uh, you get one point for, for each day. So no classical at all? Uh, no, I think um, I'm. if you want to see who the best player is, make them play as many games as possible. Right. And uh, if you keep the Rapid format, then there's still room for, you know, opening ideas, preparation and, and everything, but the time uh, to allowed to, I mean, uh, conceal your uh, your weaknesses and, and ev everything is is not there. So it becomes more, uh, yeah, I mean, you just, um, you just, I mean, up the stakes, you, you uh, increase the margins of, uh, uh, no, not the margins, but you increase the chances for errors and everything. And I think it makes it more, 
more um, more exciting and it gives a more real picture of um, of um, of the best players. Generally, um, you have two years until the next match. Do you? Yeah. You're planning to play, no matter what the format or uh, the discussions are going. What's going to happen? I don't know. Uh, I always have a kind of running joke with uh, with uh, with the team. So I mean, you were part of the team. You didn't know whether I was going to play the match, did you? I thought that was a pretty decent chance. Like, I'm not sure how much you like hanging out with us if you weren't playing to play the match, but I thought you were going to. No? Yeah, I mean, um, but it was never never a short thing. So that's true. It, it's. I mean, it's uh, it was a good experience this time in in London. Um, I didn't feel as many nerves as I did in uh, last time in in New York. Uh, it was a better experience, um, but I don't know. It's uh, it's still not m not my favorite event. Speaking of nerves, can you generally sleep at? No, that was one of the good things about London. I generally slept very well. Uh, sometimes I would sleep poorly uh, before the before the rest day, but that was more a case of discipline. Like uh, I'm not playing tomorrow. Why? Why am I gonna go to sleep early? And then uh, I would have a good rest day. Good get uh, rest and be just completely tired in the evening. Uh, wake up and, and feel good the the next day. Like the day of the tie break, uh, I was really tired on, on the on the rest day, but I had a good rest day. I had played some football, had a massage, ate well, relaxed, and then, um, yeah, the the on the tie break, I just felt felt wonderful to be honest, just as fresh as I'd ever felt in in the match. Nice. Your football injury did it bother you or not really? No, no, no. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't a big deal. Uh, just there on the, on the pitch, I I played on, um, and uh, it wasn't much of an injury to to speak of. And uh, I mean, I was lucky, and uh, I think the other guy was a bit luckier as well. Could have been could have been uh, worse. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I played. I didn't play that great during the match, but I didn't think there were any clear signs of concussion or anything. So no, no, no look, I think look, it's look, all fairly good. cautious still. Um, generally, the match at some point, did you have the feeling, "Ugh, this is going wrong. This feels like the Kayaki match. Like the guy, yeah, is hanging in there, and now he's starting to get chances in game six and so on." Or do you feel it was under control? Like, no, I mean, I think game six was a bit of a turning point uh, for the first five games. I didn't. I mean, I had some suspicion that I'd missed a huge chance in, in game one, and that might be the best chance that I, I would get in the match. But I, I mean, I, I still sort of felt that I was clearly the better player, and uh, that I was going to get there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, when I didn't get anything, uh, when, well, when I almost lost game six, and I didn't get anything from game seven, um, then I was a little, little less op optimistic. Uh, obviously, surviving game eight was huge, and then going into uh, to game eight. Uh, I mean, game nine. I was so optimistic, and I mean, I managed to to actually get some some prep on on the board uh, for the only time in the that match. That was the one game where actually prep hit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, only time in white, and then. Um, I mean, this whole this whole opposite color bishop thing was a little more solid than than I thought during the game, and uh, then I mean, I mean, I made one impatient move, and after after that, I'd frankly more or less given up winning the match in in uh, in regulation. Uh, I mean, I I, I would was going to try in game eleven, but it was extremely half hearted. As everybody could see, like one small surprise and just. <laughs> but you weren't too worried about the black games after he switched to this more ambitious setup with knight d5 that he could catch you there, or do you think Ugh, I better try with white, or I might be in trouble there? No, I, I, I still, I still very much felt that these positions are so difficult to play for, for white. 
Like, I'm going for mate. Like, and it's... I mean, it's it's like... It felt like playing a very good King's Indian. And I haven't played too much King's Indian, but when I do play it, it's, 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 a, it's a great feeling, because you know often that you're just... I mean, it's... I'm knocking in open doors here, because everybody said that, but it's... It's it's a very good feeling that you know you're lost on one side of the board, so you have to give mate, and it's it's very, it's kind of refreshing, because uh, you know you feel like you have very little to lose, and uh, especially in game, in game ten, I felt that uh, clearly has prepared this and uh, um, he's probably better, but I felt like after bishop b6, queen e8, like I have a target that is mate. Um, and it's not so clear what his is, and I mean that I understand. I understood later that was a little bit superficial, uh, and that he had much more resources than I thought maybe at the game. But um, I mean, as you saw, he went he went wrong uh, pretty quickly, and after that, I I had most of the chances. So, um, so I mean, it, uh, to make a long story short, that's the reason why I wasn't so worried about this these black games because I felt that the positions were uh, were easier to play for, for black and for um, for my whole career I've felt that um, in in complicated positions I've always done well against uh, always done well against Fabi. And then approaching the tiebreak we all know your record in tiebreaks and all that but do you think about the result there, or do you just think, okay, we're here now, I'll better get a good night's sleep and take it from there? I mean, first of all, I was extremely happy to get there, because, uh, I mean, I was bored of classical chess, and I just wanted to, um, you know, play more on instinct and just have fun. Uh, so that was a, a relief in itself, uh, and I was um, pretty sure that if, if I woke up and and had a good day, then I was going to win. Um, there there were some thoughts creeping in, like, I mean, I'm probably going to win, but what if I don't? I could wake up the next day and lose the, the match. Uh, but then, I don't know. I was just, I mean, clear the the confidence thoughts were were clearly the dominating ones on on that day. And uh, I was especially happy to get white in the first game because I, I knew I had a very good chance to 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 strike early, and then uh, I, I I mean I kind of felt that if I won the first game, then I'd probably uh, win the match ahead of schedule. Right. So that went according to plan. If you you view, well, you mentioned you would like the whole match to be rapid, but it doesn't diminish the title that you win in tie breaks and not in classical games, or do you care about that? No, I mean, a little bit, obviously. Uh, but, um, I, I mean, I've played so so poorly in, in classical chess for so long now that I cannot, I, mean, I, I cannot, like, be, be um, too greedy at this point. I mean, I'll take whatever <laughs> world championship I'll, I'll get. I mean, I, I don't... Um, I'm not a um, dominating player in in classical anymore by any means. So Still number one though. Yeah, barely. I mean, I, I, it's just the the amount of luck I've had to have to 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 stay number one is just incredible. Um, I don't get me wrong. I still consider myself the best player. I, I, it's just that when you're just more or less. Uh, equal to the others, or a little bit better, uh, to to always be be a number one in the rankings. You have to be pretty lucky. Speaking of the others, if they keep the current format with candidate matches and so on, what do you think is the most likely for 2020? The most likely challenger. It's hard to say. It's very hard to to qualify twice. Uh, not not many people have done that. But I don't know. Um, I don't know what the format's going to be. I don't know if I'm going to play. I don't know who's going to play the uh, the candidates. I mean, qualifying for the candidates is is pretty tough unless you and you unless you consistently 
um, so highly rated that you that you know you're gonna get in. Um, so I mean, it's it's just, it's just open, so open at this point. But since Pavi is probably slightly better player than the others, then I guess he's the favorite. But I don't know. I wouldn't wouldn't put any money on it. Ding and his hundred game streak hasn't sold you yet. Uh, no, I mean, I, I like Ding. Uh, he's a great player. Um, but then on the other hand, I had I had some fun in uh, our little match in, in St. Louis. Oh, yeah, you did pretty well there. Um, and, uh, uh, I mean, his, uh, his streak and his results recently speak for themselves. He's, uh, he's doing great, but I, I think he himself would admit that he hasn't really proven it in the... In the very top tournaments um, yet, so I think he's eager to to get the chance and prove his his um, his worth. Uh, like in the candidates last time, he showed that he could uh, he could fight on equal terms with everybody, but he didn't really show anything more. And I think he's he's certainly eager to to do that. Whether he will, I remain uh, skeptical until I'm proven otherwise. Do you see any of the guys that aren't in the top 10 or top 12 yet that could break into top chess soon? Some Iranian kids or some Chinese kids coming up or not yet? I mean, a lot could happen in two years. Uh, but I think most likely the ones who fight out the candidates in 2020, it's going to be a lot of the same guys who, who have been in 18, 16, 14. Um, it isn't that easy to, to break in, but I would be love to to pro be proven wrong. It's uh, yeah, it's always fun with uh, new people coming up. All right, let's get to important topics. I hear you're planning a rap career. Is there truth to that? Oh, uh, yes, some leaks. There are leaks. Close relatives leaking some info. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, there is uh, there is one coming out. I think this week, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anymore. Uh, it's it's in Norwegian. So if you're gonna learn Norwegian, it would be for, would be for that. No, I should. Like, uh, <coughs> communicating with my daughter would be second on the list, but mainly to listen to your lyrics. Yeah, yeah. I'll try. Yeah, but it's it's um, um, yeah, it's it's gonna be fun. Uh, just yeah, keep um, keep looking out for that. It's going yeah, to be looking good. forward to. And in other notes, are you are you doing well in fantasy football? Like our mutual French friend seem to be struggling a bit. Yeah, the problem is that uh, uh, Fres nobody really respects his his game, and also Hammer Hammer has gotten he, he's gotten his drive back, like. He's been absent for for uh, four months. He was gonna quit and everything, and now he's just going crazy messaging everybody. Since he has had a couple of couple of good rounds, he's he's turning up on fantasy podcasts and everything. Wow. I think Peter is especially annoyed about that. But <laughs> yeah. Nothing from Hammer for um, for months, and then when he has one or two good rounds, he's he's all back. <laughs> But again, that's a hammer we know and love. Do you have time to follow basketball these days? I'm a bit out of this NBA season. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, now that uh, now that Steph and Draymond are back, I'm kind of watching those games. Um, it's it's a weird season. It's a really weird season so far. Yeah, I only enjoy following Philadelphia. There's just so much mess there. Yeah. I mean, a cast player. I'm not sure if people will understand this, but can you relate to what happened to Markel Fultz? He was like the number one rookie, and then he sort of, yeah, I'm assuming couldn't handle the tension or forgot how to shoot. Can you understand how that could happen? Well, I mean, the the, the thing now is that his agent lawyer has come out and said this is 100% physical. It's not mental at all. But we're not buying that, right? No, probably not. But he's he's putting so much pressure on the kid now. Like he's saying, he he's injured. He has no. There's nothing. So I mean, basically, once he's clear to play, 
there are no excuses anymore. Which I think is I, I don't know. It's just it's just so weird. I, I don't I, I mean I don't know if we've uh I mean you see similar things in, in chess like uh people are extremely high highly uh touted as, as young players. I mean they just get the yips at some point and kind of play. Uh uh not pointing to any any of your former employers or anything. Uh, <laughs> um, no. But that's yeah, yeah, this is the weirdest story I've seen because I'm not buying that it was like this. Now they went to twenty new specialists and they came up with one diagnosis that they hadn't ruled out yet. Like I'm not buying it. I think it's just a mental thing. That's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm. I, I he. I mean, he's clearly not gonna play for their team anymore. I mean, he's gonna. He's gonna get traded to some to some shitty team who is willing to to take uh, a chance on anybody. And if he uh, proves everybody wrong, I would would love it. Yeah. Can we just go really for him in Phoenix? Yeah. Can we just Let's... go back to the game for a second? Yeah. Here we are. Because... Some simplifications. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I suspected that this was um, going to happen. Uh, he did have a choice, though, after uh, Rook HD8, whether to take immediately, which is the natural option, or to go Knight D3. But I don't know if Knight D3 has any particular point other than trying to trying to provoke rook d4, knight e5. Um, it's cute. I don't know. Um, okay, anyway, he took, which is, which is very natural. Uh, and yeah, I mean, this is such a shitty position for, for black. Uh, it's very hard to see him really uh, improving his position at all here. It's gonna be. Black, you mean? But what does white want to do? Well, I mean, first of all, expanding on one of the flags, I guess. Uh, I mean, I would probably start with h4, give him, uh, give him a choice. Cause with h4, you can still go g3, f4 later if you want. And then after h4, you don't. Uh, you got you got to make a decision. Either you you allow h5, and then g3 f4 becomes a lot more tempting because uh, g g7 is gonna be weak. Um, or and also you can you can play on the on the queen side. I mean you can go b4 now. If he goes b5, maybe a4 at some point. Um, I played knight c5. Very direct. Yeah, what's the point of rook b8? I don't know. Maybe I'll just go back and say, okay, you didn't blunder. <laughs> no, I mean, rook b8 is by far the only move, I think. Yeah. So, ah, he, his point is obvious. I mean, Levon is, is tricky as usual. And he spent... Is this correct? He spent virtually no time still. Um, I'm not what? sure, but it's clear Maxime has been taking a lot of time and Levon blitzed for long, so it's probably fairly correct. Or what control are they playing? Are they playing the 140? Uh, so this weird delay thing, but generally, yeah, it's 140 for 40 moves plus uh, delay and then 40 minutes plus delay after 40. The maximum boring control, as they say. <laughs> Are you used to this delay? No, not really. Uh, I mean, I, I understand the point. Uh, in in a, in a way, it's 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 a better form than increment. Um, I mean, but I'm just so used to playing with with increment instead of delays. So, what's his trick after knight c5 rook b8? No, I mean, I, I I would assume he wants to go a3 b4. And he wants to provoke b696. 
Uh, I mean, I, I, I like, I kind of like the move knight c knight c five. Like, you give him something to think about, and worst case, you can never, you can always go back. No damage done. All right, so it seems like still a lot of work to do for Maxime to hold this together. You're a busy man. You have a sponsors event or something coming up? Yeah, I have it. I have that uh, pretty soon, so I gotta, I gotta go pretty fast. Okay, then any closing thoughts on the World Rapid and Blitz? Who do you think are the big rivals? I don't know who's gonna play. Um, first of all, but. Um, I mean, some of those guys who's who's playing here and um, Nakamura's not playing. I heard because he's not in time to get a visa. At least that's what they said. But yeah, other than that, Ahmed Yarov, Levon, I think Maxim, Giri, the usual. Giri, I think Giri's playing it. It's in Saint Petersburg. Wow, wow! I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> that's gonna be great fun. <laughs> He's, he's, gonna, he's gonna regret it. He's never gonna play again after this one. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna lose to... He's gonna lose to uh, Artyomyov, Borcharov... Um, I mean, all of the Russian guys. <laughs> this Artemyev, he's like 2850 in Blitz, is he for real? Like, he crushed this European Blitz championship. Yeah, he's, he's good. I mean, he's... Uh, he has a very good natural feel for for the game, which is, is great in Blitz, so... I think he's he's legit. All right, then yeah, best of luck. Triple crown still in play this year. We'll be following the world representative. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, going to uh, take back the throne, the, the triple the triple throne. <laughs> no usurpers are gonna be left alive. <laughs> We're looking forward to it. Thanks a lot, Magnus Carlsen. Enjoy your time off. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.